it's a reason why you're here. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get the latest topics, the latest news that the Mental Note comes out with. My brother and I, Austin Scott, we're gonna give you the mental perspective of sports. It's just something different, but I think it's something that'll be good for you. I'm Marcus Smith II, and this is my Mental Note. What's goody, what's goody? We are back with another Mental Note. My brother, Austin Scott, in the building. We're about to tap in, man, Anthony Richardson. Let's get right into it. Tapping out from being too tired. My man, like, come on. What's your mental take? What's your mental note with this? Man, I don't even know where to start. What uh, you thinking, bro? Man, basically, so what happened was it was uh, uh, the last drive. Anthony Richardson had to kind of threw someone off, made a dash for it, and he came down the right side of the field, and a, and a guy kind of tackled him low, which made it look like he possibly could have had an ankle injury or so or something. So I, everyone, I know I was thinking that he might have had an ankle injury or a knee injury. Not until his post game when he said he was tired that everyone actually knew what happened. Man tapped out. Said he was too tired to finish the drive. That's that's different. That's different. Mm. You you you're not used to that. And from everyone else is what they're saying as well. They haven't seen it either. Tapping out in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter on a long drive is a little different from being in that fire on the fourth in the fourth quarter on that last drive. That's different. Now, what I will say, too, with him tapping out, those five guys up front, they don't feel the same about you when you tap out in a situation like that. And that yeah. will that will affect everything going forward. When those five guys up front don't feel the same about you, that will affect everything moving forward, everything. That's where it starts I mean, And those yeah. guys don't believe in you. When those guys don't believe in you, hey, man. Well, you need the people blocking for you. Got to have them. You know, those are the people you take out to lunch and you feed them because you know they're going to have your back on Sunday. You know what I mean? And I think, I think that is definitely something that you, you have to consider because you're the quarterback. You're the leader of the team. And everybody was tired. It's not like you the only one tired. Let me say this. You the quarterback, there's probably more people, more players tired than you are. Because you got guys running routes trying to stay above water. They they trying to make sure they in your vision. You got the linemen blocking. Like, they trying to make sure that you don't have nobody sacking you. And, but guess what? You got some They're 20 my... yard routes on the outside. But, but you know, too, like, I want to make sure that I'm not being a hypocrite as well because I want to talk about the mental aspect because I understand, right, but it doesn't make it right. You know what I mean? You can understand something, but you don't have to agree with something. Right. So I remember being in the NFL 2014, first season. I remember feeling like I've arrived, like, man, I'm a first round draft pick. Now, everybody don't have this mentality, but I'm publicly saying that I didn't have the right mindset. I didn't have the right mentality. My mental wasn't, hey, I need to go out here and prove myself. I felt like I didn't have to prove myself because I did that in college, right? So I'm not sure if Anthony Richardson is thinking that exact same way, but I understand how that can derail you from being the best player that you could possibly be. And it could take your confidence, shoot your confidence when stuff isn't, isn't going right. And when you are in the heat of a battle, I'm, I will never forget, I'm – Literally, in preseason, the starters come out. Nobody came in to get me. Nobody was saving me, right? It was a long drive. 
they keep running boots and I keep missing the quarterback and I keep falling on the ground and I keep sprinting and I keep running. I'm not getting a break, right? Nobody is saving me. Usually in college, you got somebody that, hey, come get you, right? To give you a breather. But you know, in the NFL, what they're trying to do, they want to see how far you can go. They want to see if they can break you. They want to see if you're quote unquote, mentally tough enough to survive which i feel like is idiotic i think you shouldn't do players like that because some of us may be not be ready mentally right and that's okay you know what i mean i didn't really start to see the light until like my third or fourth year which is not good right you think about the organization they invest in money in you so they ultimately feel like they're wasting your time and then you come out and say that you're tired, that's really not going to help the situation at all. You but know? As, like you were saying, though, man, you said those three or four years with a guy like Anthony Richardson, it may take three or four years because he was a late, well, not a late bloomer, but he only played one year in uh, in college at Florida. And, you know, the coach took a chance on him last year. He was dealing with injuries, so he only got a few games last year. He had a good game here and then, you know, a couple of mediocre games. And then this year he came off shoulder surgery, came out and maybe a good game here. And some below average games got hurt again. He had a hip injury because he got hit, and it was hips or rib. He went out of that game, and he came back. And Joe Flacco came in, and he made the offense go. So. Anthony Richardson doesn't have to be the guy that relies on his legs, which he's relied on his legs his whole life. That's what got him here. So he know that will keep him here. So he kind of relies on him too much. So in that situation, he could have dropped back, you know, stepped up in the pocket and hit a receiver because the offensive coordinator is going to call up some plays that will get people open, but his eyes may be in the wrong place. So he, he kind of needs to, sit behind Joe and, you know, learn the offense a little better because he, he's this week he'll see how Joe runs the offense. Last time when Joe was running the offense, he was hurt. This time he's there, right there watching the whole time. So he'll see how Joe goes about, you know, making his reads or, or, or how he goes about stepping up in the pocket and, or getting the safety this way. So you can make that throw on this side and not making those tough throws. Sometimes taking the easy throw rather than take, using your legs, and you know, so he won't have to deal with those injuries he's been dealing with this far. Yeah, I think that will get him mentally back on track. But I also know that you can't go into it thinking you could do the same thing in college, right? Thinking that stuff is the same way and it's easy, man. These these coaches in the NFL, they scheming you up. And they're going to attack you. And if a team attacks you and it works, you're going to see that each every and week. every week. You're going to see it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. So him being benched, because did you did you talk about them getting, him being benched? Because he won't be starting won't this be week. Starting on Joe. Old man Joe. Man, he came out the streets last year with the Browns and was making it happen. Right now he with the Colts saving then, the day. Those t those games that Anthony was out, he was also making it happen. The receivers look a lot different when wow. when Joe is back there throwing the ball. So Anthony will have to deal with that as well, man. So yeah, thinking about that of him being benched, I'm not sure if he's been benched before or if that happened with him at Florida, but this is going to be a mental barrier that he is going to have to cross. And the fact of the matter is he doesn't really have that much time, right? I'm a former first rounder. I didn't play well my first year. I didn't play at all, really, my first year. I, you know, I thought I had, I, I thought I could not play on special teams and play, right? And that's not the case. You know what I mean? Second year, I get hurt. Third year, I, I had like three and a half sacks. So now they're looking at it like, okay, we kind of wasted our money because we haven't really got any return on our investment. So he really, exactly. I've invested money. I've get, I'm giving you millions of dollars. 
So for him, he's a I was a 26 overall pick. He's a top four pick. So he doesn't really have time to sit there and not build mentally, not look at what Flacco is doing, not meet with his people that's uh, around him to help him see the field better, to help him stay zen when it comes to being on the field, right? To to help his off the field, right? Like he doesn't really have time because that third once that third year comes, he has to produce. If he doesn't produce in that third year, they're not picking up the fifth year option and they're going to move on. So, and you know how they do with, I'm going to just say it, they don't really give black quarterbacks time. Hey, the they, position for us, for the black the black quarterbacks, is, is not many because you have to go to a certain system, and that system already has the majority of the black backup quarterbacks. Exactly. You're so, so that, right. That league will turn you into a, a, a high school coach real quick, real quick. <laughs> Real quick, man. So I, I, I really hope he, you know, sits back and takes it in, takes everything in from Joe, and I hope his situation gets better. You know, go ahead as a pro and come back better than he was before. I think this will be a learning lesson for him, and I think it'll really help him in the long run if he really takes on the mental aspect and learn, like you said, from Joe. He can look at the game in a whole different light and go at it like with a chip on your shoulder and not like you have arrived. Because when you come at it like you have arrived and everything is cool and everything is great, you lose a step. And then stuff like this comes up and it's almost like, well, everybody is speculating. Are these his true colors? Oh my God. He said he was tired. He tapped out the game. That may not even be who he is. He may have just been having a moment, right? But Man, how, do you change, how do you change their mind with everybody seeing it? You know what I mean? He could also be just, man, it was so much maybe going through his head. He may have been hurt, really. He may have really been hurt, but he may have not wanted to say I was hurt. Like those lingering injuries. That's a great when you, point. When you're dealing with injuries, your whole, you know, your injury riddle, your whole rookie year. Second year, you're injured again, you know. You kind of don't want to put it out there that you may be hurt again. So he's that, trying to say – point. He may have tried to say the right thing and end up saying the worst thing he could have said. That's so a you, great point. You never know. So it's, it's a lot of things mentally when you like, you know, first-round pressure, it's a lot going on in his head, man. He's just trying to be the best he can be, and sometimes it's not showing – you know, he he could be prepping all week very well. He could look great in practice. Sometimes it, it just don't translate to the field. And he's trying to make, like I said, you revert back to the things that got you there and it's making it look worse. So, yeah. He could be dealing with two different things. That's right. Change your thought process. Know that you could be the quarterback that the Colts called you to be. The mental aspect of it, learn from Joe Flacco and what he's doing. And when your number gets called again, be ready because time is running short and you have to be mentally intact for these situations. So, yeah. Dope, man. Dope. It's the mental note. We here. Hey, Scott in the building. Surprise, he ain't say go dogs. Come on now. Come on now, bro. Come on. We hit him every three weeks in a row, baby. I got to give me some more gear. Three weeks in a row, baby. Three weeks in a row. We playing Florida this week, too. That's crazy. But we out of here, man. We'll, we'll see y'all. Peace.